So we can do the same thing for uh, a slightly more complex scheme. That's the midpoint rule. So the midpoint rule u of n plus 1, let's make sure it's numerical, minus u of n minus 1 divided by 2 delta t equal to, let's say, scalar od, we have lambda times u hat of n, right? That's basically approximating the derivative using the midpoint rule. And the approximation error is O delta T square, right? Second order. That means if we use the analytical solution, the one without a hat, we get approximately equal. If, if we quantify that approximate equal, we have plus an error term that is order delta T square. All right. OK. So um, let's see. So when we move the known, OK. So, so then the next step in error analysis is what? Is to combine these two equations by defining e of n being u hat of n minus u of n. Uh, subtracting these two equations gets me e of n plus 1 minus e of n minus 1. No longer n, n minus 1. Divided by 2 delta t would be equal to lambda. Subtract the same thing, e to the n plus o delta t square. Right? Actually, for any schemes, you can do the same thing. Now, we move the latest iterations to the left hand side what we get is uh, e to the n minus 1 plus 2 delta t lambda times e to the n plus o delta t to the q right okay now this recursive formula involves actually more than a single term in E, how can we figure out the amplification factor for that? Hmm? Sorry? We use forward order for the first one. We use forward order for the first one. Again, that's something we actually did, I think, once before. That is, trying to convert this three-term recursion into a system of one-term recursion, right? By writing down the formula of e to the n plus 1 and e to the n would be equal to, right, let's write it down. The first one is e to the n minus 1 plus 2 delta t lambda e to the n. The second term is just e to the n, right? I'm just adding a trivial equation, which allows me to, oh, delta t cube, which allows me to write this recursion as a matrix equation that only involves a single um, delay, like in the index. So writing down that as a matrix, what I get is uh, the right hand side has to be en and en minus one, exactly one index shift from the left hand side. And what is the matrix here? 2 delta t lambda, two delta t lambda one. 1, 1, 0. All right. OK, so what um, now I can do the same thing as in the forward order case. I can use this equation again and again. And if this matrix is uh, if this matrix is is called A, what I get is is uh, what I get is A to the n plus one power times the uh, initial error, right? Which uh, we can assume is zero, and plus a to the nth power times o delta t cube plus a to the n minus one power times o delta t cube plus etc. Right, so I get basically a lot of terms uh, that is multiplied with o delta t cube, except for the earlier contributions are going to be multiplied by a to a certain high power. So now, what is the criterion for the scheme to be stable? My A has to be what? Eigenvalues less than one. My A has to have all its eigenvalues 
within the unit circle, right? Remember, A probably has complex eigenvalues in many cases. Okay. So now the stability criterion is not just a single criteria anymore. It's actually a collection of criterions. And the collection, how many criterions you have, actually depends on how many terms are in there in the recursion or how big of a matrix you have to construct. In this case, we get a 2 by 2 matrix and we get an eigenvalue of two things. So how do we compute this eigenvalue of this matrix? Well, of course you can do this by hand, but I'm just going to do MATLAB. So I can define uh, symbolic variables, uh, lambda, delta t. Okay, takes uh, some time to load the symbolic toolbox. And uh, now I have matrix A is equal to 2 times lambda delta t. 1, 1, uh, 1, 0. So that's my matrix. It's a symbolic matrix. And I can do eigenvalue analysis to that matrix. Oh, what I get is that guy. Okay, so I have lambda delta t plus uh, this thing and lambda delta t minus this thing. Both has to be in the unit circle, right? Circle that's centered at one at zero. At the yeah, the unit circle is a circle centered at the origin having a radius of, of one. Right? So so any any complex number within that circle, when you take it to higher power, is gonna decay to zero. Anything outside the circle, when you take it to the higher power, is the magnitude is gonna to grow to infinity. Okay? So through our analysis. Basically, we have two criterions for the scheme to be stable. Uh, one is the magnitude of lambda delta t plus or minus. Actually, two criterions are uh, together. Square root of 1 plus lambda delta t square. Okay has to be less or equal to 1. That seems to be a hard criteria, right? If you look at it, 1 plus something square is probably already going to be bigger than 1, right? And I have a certain number plus that bigger than 1 number and minus that bigger 1 number. How can I fit both numbers into this unit circle. Basically, I have lambda delta t somewhere, let's say here, and I plus something bigger than 1 minus something bigger than 1. How can we fit both into a circle? Yes? Can I just the what? Sorry? Oh, yes. I just uh, computed. Uh, uh, so, so basically, the error is going to be accumulation of uh, the error from previous time steps. And the earlier time steps has been amplified by this a to the nth power. So for the scheme to be stable, we want a to have eigenvalues all smaller than yes, to all smaller uh, than one in its magnitude, which means the eigenvalues needs to be in the unit circle. And then we went to MATLAB and computed the two eigenvalues of the matrix. And then we wrote down the formula that both eigenvalues has to have its magnitude less or equal to one, right? So, can somebody figure out uh, uh, what lambda delta t could be for the midpoint row to be stable? So, a negative one will work. So, let's try. Lambda delta t equal to negative one. It turns out then one plus lambda delta t square is going to be square root of two so we have negative one plus square root of two here and minus square root of two you have the minus square root of two being unstable right so minus one doesn't work lambda be imaginary can lambda be imaginary yes so if you have an imaginary lambda then maybe it 
if you have imaginary lambda, maybe it'll fit. Let's try. So if lambda delta t equal to i, okay, then square root of this is going to be what? Zero. Zero, right. So then I have i plus minus zero. So basically I have this point. Oh, cool. So the scheme actually works for purely imaginary numbers for lambda, unlike forward Euler, right? So that is actually why, uh, remember like when we did the system, uh, we had uh, the, the pendulum system, we get two eigenvalues on the imaginary axis, which doesn't work for forward Euler. For midpoint rule, that works because the midpoint rule actually is designed through this eigenvalue analysis for systems that has purely imaginary eigenvalues. So it turns out, if you have any component in the real axis, uh, this the midpoint rule would not be a good scheme. You will get your error amplified. And the midpoint rule would only work. All right. So, real lambda, imaginary lambda. The midpoint rule would only work in the imaginary axis. Uh, actually, in the region on the imaginary axis bounded between i over delta t and minus i over delta t. Anything outside this region, including the extended part of the imaginary axis and anywhere other than this imaginary axis would be unstable for midpoint rule. So that's the that's because of the combination of these two criteria, right? That makes midpoint rule a very dangerous scheme to use for any system that do, do not have pure imaginary do not have all these eigenvalues lying on the pure imaginary axis, which usually means uh, systems that conserves a bunch of quantities like kinetic energy and things like that. All right, oh, like oscillating systems, like oscillating system that like doesn't have anything that decays.